Welcome to the African Plains. We are here on the plains of Lake Ayasi right now and we drove from Arusha this morning, about a four or five hour drive in total to get to the edge of the reserve and then a 45 to an hour drive to get here in the middle of the wilderness where we're going to be spending the next two days with the Hadzabi people. Hello. So the Hadzebi are some of the last hunter-gatherers on earth and there's around 1,200 to 2,000 left or living at the moment. They're split into camps of around 20 to 100 people and we're here with the camp right now, setting up my personal camp while we're, while we're meeting the guys. <laughs> They're, like I said, strictly hunter-gatherers. Some Hadzabe use dogs and some Hadzabe don't. They use some Western resources. Like one meal is called ugali. It's like corn flour and water for carbohydrates. And then obviously uh, berries, fruits, honey, and then meat as well. They hunted this morning, but with no success, which is a shame, but it means that hopefully we'll have more success later tonight. So we're gonna go on an evening hunt tonight and then we're gonna go first thing tomorrow morning as well because obviously I'm sleeping with them. So we're right here and we're ready to go in the morning. So like I said, the Hadzabi are the last hunter gatherers on earth and it's been the duty of the Tanzanian government since the early 2000s to protect the land that they're able to hunt in. So now they have over a thousand, just over a thousand square kilometers in which they operate and that land is strictly for the Hadzabi. Uh, to preserve obviously the wild animals in the area to keep them self-sufficient. These people have been here for over 10,000 years which is over 200 generations and leave no mark on the land so it's in the interest of all of us as well as the Tanzanian government to keep things that way. Yeah. They don't plant, you know when you roll maybe you give the marijuana, the yeah. seeds. Oh it falls on the down. floor? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so they get it back for free? So normally do the women have one man accompany with them when they go or it's just women go foraging on their own? Sometimes we are one man. One man. They have a bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> and then the rest of the men go for mainly for me. Actually, husband and wife, they go to, they escort here, their wife to digging. Oh, uh, really? While the men, they're hunting. Sometimes they're eating at the wild. Yeah. And when they back home, it's full. Okay. Yeah. So, they, like, the, the guys now, they go when they're hunting, they forage for stuff. And then even if they don't catch meat, they have some other stuff. Yeah, yeah. there is a fruit, there is a root. Yeah, and yeah, honey yeah. as well. Yeah. Who don't have a wife? If they don't have a wife, they go oh, in here. Like here, this is a room. Okay. Where they sleep, yeah? Yeah, See, they walk fire. And this is where they sit to decide where to hunt. Yeah, yeah that's they are sitting there. So apparently it's fire making time now. And these are the tools. So you have the hardwood and carving the softwood over there. Okay. <laughs> All right, the evening hunt is imminent. It is half past four now. And it's come to my attention that I shouldn't have trained legs two days ago because they are on fire. Did four sets of squats for the first time in 20 days. But yeah, they'll loosen off, I'm sure. Let's get after it. <laughs> This is a tendon. Okay. Tendon of animal? Yes. All right, looks like we're going. Just follow the leader. Don't know how far we're walking or how long we're walking for. All running. It seems like he's in the mood. 
He's making himself a necklace now. <laughs> There's a rabbit in the bush. These rabbits don't hang about like the ones in England. They know what's coming for them. God, that was close. It's like a tiny, tiny mango. So in theory, the way it works is those little fruits and berries and stuff are snacks for on the go grazing on the go and then like that bird that we've caught already the one about this size should be a pre-dinner snack on a good day uh, and then hopefully some bigger game he just prodded that one out of a tree looks ripe and ready Bird number three. Arrow retrieval is part of the job. The accuracy. I can't believe it. Watch this. Look what they got. I can't be some bagalako. 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 Yeah. Okay. 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 The accuracy is just incredible. I can't even see the birds. And they're what, five, six meters away? Yeah. Every time, first time, crazy. One hour and a half of walking, just under two hours it will be by the time we get back because we've done a little loop. I think it's like five birds and I am parched, I'll tell you that, but they don't drink at all. Tomorrow morning, they'll have liters in one sitting. Bang off for the day. Be back at like midday, one o'clock after, you know, five hours on some occasions and then come back and drink again, which is mental. So yeah, no big game today, but lots of little birds. And apparently tomorrow on the route we're going is where we'll have much more chance of success of something bigger. Uh, gave chase to a rabbit though, that was fun. So yeah, we'll settle down now for the evening and prepare for tomorrow morning. Club. 
Unsurprisingly, tastes like chicken. Chicken, yeah. Yep. <coughs> this one, yeah. Interesting. It's like a, uh, it's kind of tangy. Not bad. Good morning. It's 5.45 a.m. I'll give you a debrief of the sleep and last night uh, very shortly, but uh, the sun's not rised yet, as you can see, and we're going to go hunting very soon. Just going to have a cup of tea now, the luxuries, eh, of camping, and then we're going to head over, sit around their, uh, their camp, decide, well, I'm not going to decide, I'll let them decide which way we're going, uh, and then we're going to hopefully catch some, some big game, bigger game. My leg doms are recovered, so uh, they're feeling a bit fresher now. These guys are going to run quick if they see anything, so I'm all well and good keeping up with them at a walking pace, even though the walking pace is not a, not a stroll by any means. Um, but yeah, I'll do my best to, to run with them, keep after them, uh, and we'll get some cool action for you today. <coughs> <laughs> so the dogs are hunting with us today we see what happens it's 6 15 we probably go for four or five hours today so everyone now is looking for bush pig tracks yeah and we split into two groups yeah. And the dogs will follow the sheep. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're bush bashing now to get through. Split into three groups. All divided for looking for trails. And I'm looking for them looking for trails. <laughs> ah, that's a map, bro. The dogs are after a, a deer running through the bush now. I don't know if any of the team is far enough ahead to intercept it. So we've got four arrow types. He just shot the most lethal one, which is the barbed poison arrow for a big game like this. That's poison is from this tree. This poison. This is a desert rose, yeah. Desert rose. Yeah. Then you've got the barbed non-poison arrow. You've got the little corn on the cob one. And that's for puncturing small birds. So you like knock them out and then the whole arrow doesn't go through and destroy them. And then there's a, a long, thin metal end as well. Also for big game, um, but you want the barbed ones for like monkeys. These are the bush pig tracks. We've been going for two hours now. And uh, I wonder what my insurance would say about this. I'm getting scratched to Proper bush bashing. And the pace is quick. They're not in a hurry, but it's uh, intentional, you know. <laughs> and there's some more marijuana on the go. <sighs> so yeah, two hours in, still following those bush pigs, the warthogs. Hopefully some fruits for our labor soon. So I just went through one of these ones. It looks harmless, but if you get close, there's spikes all over it. So I've been torn up, <laughs> but we're going strong. And there's uh, how many bush pigs? Four, you think, or three? Yeah, there are two big and one baby. My friend, now we are far away, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no helicopters here. <laughs> Foraging on the go. So I said I'd talk about last night as well, which I hadn't yet. It was 9.30, I think I went to bed because I was knackered, but we were by the campfire, which was five meters away from where I was sleeping. And all the lads were still knocking about until about half 10. So I was in bed, desperately tired trying to sleep, but they're 
making a racket. But I'm not exactly going to get out of my tent and say to the hunter gatherers on their own turf, excuse me lads, do you mind uh, keeping it down a little bit? So I was like, fair enough. Uh, but I was surprised how little they slept. So they probably slept from just, just before 11, probably 11 to uh, 5 when we woke up. And then we left the camp at 6. So yeah, 6 hours sleep. JJ told me that this would be four hour hunt, but we're on three hours now. So it's gonna be a six hour job at least. Don't mind, but I hope we catch something because I've not got any food. Looks like this is our first break at the three hour mark. JJ has just seen an animal go into the rocks up here, so we're gonna head over now and have a look. That's animal number one. It's like a, yeah. like a ferret. Uh, what's the name you said, JJ? Rock Hyrax. Rock Hyrax. And then I didn't even know the other group when we split up has has got another one. Those dogs are useful when uh, the animal's in a small hole like that. They just send send the dogs in, get a bite, and then it gives enough time for the guy to send the spear in. So that's three of those high rocks things and we're still on the trail for the bush pigs. Hungry dogs. For sure the hardest part is not the actual walking but it's the terrain. You're constantly like this. Yeah, I'm good. If you're feeling tired, you can tell me. I'll tell you, yeah. Because those people actually get don't tired. The hats, the hats don't get tired, no? All day. All the day. Four and a half hours now. Yeah? Yeah. What was it, a dog? <laughs> a dog, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think maybe there's some animal. Yeah. Uh, they pick out the birds. <laughs> Where's this one? But they are taking some gum. It's gum from the tree. Chewing gum? Chewing gum. Oh, okay. But it's all natural. Yeah. So we made it out of that bush all the way down. <laughs> Hardest bush bashing I've ever done. Like you're scrunched up in a tiny ball to try and get through. Everything's prickling. But these guys are absolute gentlemen. They move everything out of the way for me. Just to give you a better idea of the terrain as well. Obviously I'm lucky I'm wearing trousers, so my arms are getting a bit cut, but look at the legs. So tough. All scratched up every day. <laughs> nice hole. <laughs> the chief is still up there looking for the wild pig and we fortunately can follow this river the whole way back now so no more major bush bashing but hopefully there's a big catch on the cards. So we're heading back now we're still well over 10 kilometers away so it should be an hour and a half, two hour hike. And the chief and a couple of others. How many people are with the chief? Three. Three people with the chief. Uh, still in another direction looking for the bush pig. So maybe they'll get lucky uh, by the time we rendezvous with them later. But yeah, the rest of us are following this riverbed back. Mm. 
Uh, yeah, we made it. Thank you. <laughs> I need I need to sit down. <laughs> God. <laughs> so the remaining group have returned and we've been treated to a traditional dance before we leave now. Kapo kwa yona, 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 kapo kwa yona,